S car go, my car go, 160, swiftly, oh, record by a new one. Your crew run, 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 your crew run, run. run. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Charlotte on the Scene Podcast. Uh, and what's up, baby? How you doing? Bro, what what, 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 my, what, my, what the intro at? What the thing you be at? <laughs> <laughs> See, you tripping, my bro. Main man, my, main, my, main, my, main, my main man, Ant Morrow in the building. What's up, Ant? Man, I can't call it, man. You working, man. Just chilling. My man. And we got a... We got an extra special, extra, extra, extra special guest in the building oh, today. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. <laughs> we got my, my my brother, my comrade, my my man, known him for for a while, uh, Timothy Nurse. How you doing, brother? I'm good, brother. It's good Thanks. to see you. Thanks. I yeah, made it. Thanks I made it. Being, I made it on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you already know what yeah. it is, brother. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my man. It's good to have you in the building, man. Appreciate that. Uh, I hope hope we weren't too long setting up. Nah, nah, we good. <laughs> we hey, Gucci, man. Hey, 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 patience is genius. Pa- Patience is genius. Like, he already yeah. dropping jewels. We ain't even two that. minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> talk, man, talk, Tim. Talk that. We'll be talking. <laughs> talk that. So, um, known Tim for a long time. Um, um, Tim, uh, I want to get into. I want to get right into it because there's so much uh, information that we have to uh, yep. convey. Um, right. And I know you. We have your book out here. But we're going to get into that. Yeah. But I wanted to know um, uh, first. Um, where Where are you from originally? Brownsville, Brooklyn, New York. <clears throat> He couldn't, yeah. he couldn't wait to see that. Never ran, never ran, never went. Never, never ran, never went. Brownsville <laughs> Grub. Ooh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. It's funny because uh, I got a close friend I went to college with at Morgan. Yep. And, um, and you know, we rocking the hats right now. He got a, he got insurance. I had to match his energy. Hey, me at. You, you already know. know. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> but um, so uh, I took, we, we were on Facebook one time. I, I took a picture, put it on Facebook. And he told me, you know, he was like, yo, Rod, you got to take that down. So for what? He's like, Cause I put up, I put up, I put up me and him, and I put in the uh, caption East uh, uh, Brownsville, and he was like, "Nah, nah, man, take it down, man, East New York." <laughs> yeah. I'm from East know. New York. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between Brownsville and East New York? Yeah, they they actually very close, actually in proximity, right, but right. it's two, two different hoods, man. Two, two different, different hoods, hoods. Two, different, two different lifestyles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Two different, two different backgrounds. Mm-hmm. You know, we respect each other, but. No doubt. You got to switch it up. You can't put the wrong, wrong neighborhood in there. My man. Yeah, my man. My yeah. man. I had to correct myself. You made me correct it. Yeah. I have a shout out. You made me correct it. My brother, Kevin Mosley. So being from Brooklyn, um, yep. you're living in Charlotte now. Yep. yep. What What do you do in Charlotte? <laughs> what I don't do in Charlotte. Right, All right. Exactly. So basically, uh, <laughs> I, I, I moved here because of corporate. So I have mm-hmm. a job working at uh, one of the biggest banks in America. Mm-hmm. I'm not mm-hmm. going to say the name. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, basically, uh, been been there now 13 years, but they brought me here to Charlotte in the first place. Um, and I see a lot of opportunity here when I first came here. Mm-hmm. So outside of that, uh, my wife and I, we have like properties out here, so we have mm-hmm. some Airbnbs. Um, and then I have a couple of businesses that I started. Mm-hmm. So what I do in Charlotte, I work for one of the biggest banks in America, mm-hmm. have some Airbnbs. Mm-hmm. I have two other businesses. Mm-hmm. Uh, one business is called Nurse Monthly Mingle. Again, okay. Nurse Monthly Mingle. Uh, it's an event business and mm-hmm. we do events. We had an event last Saturday mm-hmm. uh, where we raised funds for the less fortunate. Mm-hmm. We raised $500 for the Big Brothers Big Sisters of nice. Charlotte nice. Um, through a game night. So we had adult game night. Mm-hmm. Space, Taboo, Uno, about 300 people. Right. Mm-hmm. It was like costume themed, mm-hmm. so it was pretty cool. Um, so I've been doing that for years now. Mm-hmm. And then the last business I have is called mm-hmm. Careers in Action, mm-hmm. which is my career coaching business where I kind of uh, give back to other people in corporate to learn how to kind of go farther faster. Awesome. Yeah. One one thing I um I've been um I've been to one of your I've been to a cu- actually a couple of nurse month monthly mingles. Um one thing that I like about it and I want you to explain it and get into it more because yep. it's not it's not an actual it's not like your typical uh networking event. Nope. Um it's very uh it, it's it's innovative and I, <laughs> I love talking about innovation because I think people or all yeah. of us, we do yeah. tend to do the same things over and over again yeah. and not put no innovation to it. Explain exp- explain how different it is. So first I want to say this. There, there, I saw a huge gap in Charlotte where there were people who were uh, older mm-hmm. kind of hanging out and then there's people younger kind of hanging out and there's like no gap like in between. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. the 30 to 40, like, you know, mid 40s mm-hmm. uh, range. And I saw that gap. And then uh, also, uh, lot, not a lot of interaction at the networking events that I went to. So you will go, people kind of hang out with their people that they came with, mm-hmm. and they don't really do much. So what I do with my events is I force interaction. So when you right. walk in, you get a networking card, and you play a game. Right. You could literally can't stand still and not talk to everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you end up within about 15 minutes speaking to 20 people easily. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. I have a game, I'm giving away a prize, mm-hmm. and people are competitive, mm-hmm. and uh, it forces people to actually speak. Mm-hmm. And you learn more about people, and you can actually build businesses with people that way. So 
Um, I really enjoy doing the, the mixers and the networking games and the, the game nights and the brunch parties and things we've been doing for the years, past mm -hmm. few years. But overall, man, it's just something I try to bring different to the city of Charlotte. And mm -hmm. I'm blessed to keep it going. How'd you get that idea to do that? Whew. So basically my uh, fiance at the time, now wife, mm -hmm. was moving to Charlotte and I wanted her to meet a couple people. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, I sent an email to about 20 people. I said, hey, you know, meet us at a spot called The Wine Love. Wine Love yeah, is down South Boulevard. South Man, yeah. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. South Man area. So I emailed 20 people and 40 people came out. Nice. To yeah. meet her, have a good conversation. Like, wow, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. So one of my buddies said, hey man, we need to do this next month, but at a different spot. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. So I think we picked Fahrenheit the next month. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. We did Fahrenheit the next month. And I did the same thing. Send the same email to the same 20 people mm -hmm. and 60 people came out. Nice. Right. I said, like, holy smokes. You doubling up. You saw the, you saw yeah. the growth. Yeah, 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 yeah. triple yeah. 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 <laughs> my boy was like, yo, let's try it again next month. Let's try it again next month. And then my wife and I just talked about it and just came with a name. Um, I wanted to leave my name on it first. Mm -hmm. uh, famous philosopher Rick Ross said, uh, you want to put your last name first. Yeah. So I named it Nurse Monthly Mingle and, you know, kind of keep my name on it. And every month since then, we've done something. So either Mixer, we've done boot camps, we've done brunch parties, we've done New Year's Eve events. Mm -hmm. But our main, like, core thing is the Mixers. So you don't have to be a professional come to the event. You just got to be... Just gotta come to an event. You could be a yeah. banker, you mm -hmm. could be a painter, you could be a artist. And uh, the, the goal is to help meet other black professionals in Charlotte. So it's been pretty successful to date. Mm -hmm. And I'm just fortunate to keep it going. Yeah, and we gotta take that idea. We gotta do more and more Eminem and change it to Eminem podcast. Yeah, you you giving him the game, bro. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> Chill out. You better yeah. take that out of there, bro. We gonna figure it out. Yeah. No, nah, but yeah. Tim, like, I, like, bro, I've been following. I, I think we've been following each other for a long time. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I, I see a lot of stuff. We've been DM. Yep. You know, show love. Yep. And um, really, like, with 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 your experience and your journey, bro. I, what I want to know is, because I know my journey with it was like I had to take myself out of yep. my mentality to go find the journey yep. and go research and yep. inform myself on how to be a businessman. Yep. And you know, that's a journey. Yep. It ain't just straight path, yep. it's everything. Yep. So I want you to like, cause a, a lot of my younger guys, my the kids, like they watch our podcast. They always mention it. I want you to, if you can, just give them your mindset on during your journey through Whatever was great and whatever was with those times where it was like, damn, it's getting hard mm -hmm. for us to figure this out, you mm -hmm. know, because a lot of them need to hear that. Yep. yep. You know, because I could tell it to them, but I, my voice is drowning them out. They got to hear me coach. They got to hear me speak. They got to hey. hear me. So I, 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 want, I want to hear that from you. I mean, I always say, you know, if you want to get to the money, right, you got to learn to get, learn who has the money, who's making the money. <laughs> right. And that doesn't have to be basketball. It doesn't have to be you know, rapping or nothing like that. There's so mm -hmm. many other ways to make money. And I think that the best way to get there is find you a mentor, somebody who's doing what you want to do, right. and have a good conversation with them, be honest and open and vulnerable. It took me a while to figure that out. But once mm -hmm. I got honest and op open and vulnerable with people at the higher levels, mm -hmm. I figured out how to kind of, kind of get there. And it sucks sometimes being from a, a weird background. You know, I grew up, you know, one single family home, just me, mm -hmm. my moms and my sister, mm -hmm. and trying to figure out how, how to be a professional black man in corporate America, because mm -hmm. I don't know who does it and nobody I can talk to. Mm -hmm. Once I got in the doors, I met a couple, I met a couple more, and mm -hmm. and they kind of mentored me and helped me get there. That's important, bro. I'm not to mm -hmm. cut you off. Mm -hmm. That's important. I want to say that that's important because as a mentor myself, like, a lot of kids automatically think they have to play basketball yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to yeah. be successful. And I'm yeah. like, no, come to this event. Yeah. Come yeah. to that event. Yeah. Go to that event. Yeah. Like, don't go to something that I'm directly connected to yeah. that can make you successful. Mm -hmm. So that's why you're so important, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, don't just think, I ain't going to play in the NBA, so I ain't going to never do nothing. Mm -hmm. Nah, so much more. I ain't going to, I can't rap, so I ain't going to never do nothing. So you know what I'm saying? Money. So it's like, yeah. it's so many different options. But this is why you are important. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you for that, bro. You, Cause they need to see. They gonna watch it. Yeah. They watch everything. <laughs> I'm serious, man. Yeah, no, that's good. So that's, that's good. That's, that's good. dope, man. No, I appreciate that, man. I think that um, um, there's so many different careers out there and opportunities across the board. Mm -hmm. Um, the kids making money playing video games now these days. Like, yeah, yeah they're just twitching and TikTok. It, it is insane out there. Um, but if it, and it's not far out of reach. Mm -hmm. You just have to find somebody who does it and have right. a conversation with them. And that's how you yeah. kind of get there. 
you know, get from here to there. Like, how do I get from here to there? That's kind of like yeah. a question that would be asked in different ways. Mm. And you have to just meet somebody who's there and have a conversation with that person, learn more about them, have, again, vulnerable conversations. Right. That's the only way to do it. Yep. That's a, that's a, that's a, great, uh, that's a great point to segue into. I remember when I was in college or coming, you know, coming out of college and I had to get that first job or whatever, and um, I didn't know how to ask. I felt funny about asking somebody, well, I guess, can I get a part-time job or trying to figure out how to get a part-time job mm -hmm. to get into IT or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you're coming out of, and we come out of the same, you know, um, predicament, you know, um, as far as city is concerned. Um, how did you, how did you, when you first got out of college, how did you make that connection with, with the person that you did or how did you get your first job? How did you get your foot in the yeah. door? Because a lot of people don't, don't know how to get their foot in the door come yeah. out of college. You know, you pay all this money for college, you come out, all right, we're going, it's just not, it's never handed to you like that. So first thing I want to say is that there are internships mm -hmm. all the time. So mm -hmm. if you're a sophomore mm -hmm. in college, junior in college, obviously if you're a senior, you're looking for a job, but sophomores and juniors, you got to maximize that time and get yourself an internship. When mm. the career fairs happen, mm -hmm. not only at your school or at neighboring schools, mm -hmm. go visit the neighboring school, mm -hmm. right. get yourself an internship. They are paying to have diverse students. Yes. Right. They are paying. Talk. And when you do the, we do the internships, that's how you get your foot in the door. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was an internship. I was very blessed. I uh, have an old, well, I had an older sister. She passed away seven years older than me. Mm -hmm. She helped me get a job at S and P. So if you ever heard of S and P five hundred, yeah, of course, yeah, standing in the pores, I mm -hmm. worked there for an internship, and I was eighteen years old at the time. Had braids and mm. a hair and bone chain and walking in through the front yeah, door. You, 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 you had a hair and bone? Yeah, I had a hair and bone. So it was a long time ago. It was, long time. It was in style back then. Right it was in style back then. How thick was it now? It wasn't a rapid it forte. Was, nah, 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 nah. nah, nah, nah. Okay. It's about, about, about the size of this one. About the okay. size of this one. Okay. Um, but, uh, but that was even for me kind of making a, a, a different thought process at the time mm. and seeing how corporate life is and not really knowing. I, was, I mean, I was green behind, I was behind the ears. I didn't know anything yeah. um, and had to learn from the ground up and mm. be very humble. But I'm a hard worker. Mm -hmm. So if somebody told me to do something, I'll figure it out. Um, and I'm good with numbers. So I was always good with numbers. That's, that's one thing. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm always good with numbers. So that that was like my my saving grace, if you will. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I got really uh, hip to the p politics in corporate America, which a lot of people don't understand is mm -hmm. is, is politics in corporate America. A lot. A lot of politics. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. You already know that. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. politics in everything you go into. I mean, even it can be an NBA. It can be, but like, there's, oh, yeah, it's, sure. it's always, it's always, it's always uh, uh, politics. Um, that's a great that's a great point. My first uh, intern was at, was at NASA. People don't, people don't understand. They would never oh, think that. I had an intern at NASA. Wow. Um, Another flex, like <laughs> random. No, 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 no. It wasn't. No, it wasn't. No. no. You already no. told me that, though. But yeah. nah, that's but crazy. But it wasn't a flex because I'm saying. Not a flex. You okay, really yeah. did it, man. It was a, it's a light flex. You yeah. think yeah. they're light flex. See what I'm saying? flex. You know what I mean? But, but, but no, like, well, I, was, I wasn't saying it because of the flex, but I can't do that. But anyway, um, you what, I was, what I was saying is they were looking for diversity. They took, <laughs> I went to Morgan State. They took all the yep. students that we had in my computer science class and they just gave them the internship. They didn't, we didn't have to like interview or nothing. They just gave it to us because mm -hmm. they need diversity mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't understand that you need they these a lot of these companies do need diversity yeah. Um, yeah. within their company so like i just they could they gave it they pay us a great stipend over the summer um and, and and it was a great opportunity and we were working on um uh i don't want to get into the project because it might be you know whatever but like we were we had a great project we worked on um and then uh along with the uh conjunction of engineering at morgan at morgan state in the schaefer building but it was just they were just they, they wanted kids to have that they wanted yep. kids from diversity and yeah. also lockheed martin yep used to yep. grab a lot yep. of a lot yep. of students from morgan they made, state they made as the well guns. they yep. make the big guns yep. Yeah. yep 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 definitely so so um oh oh my bad you, you got some no i'm listening oh, oh, my bad. Uh, I, I ain't wanna, no, wanna i'm listening wanna. bro so <laughs> so so you got so getting getting your internship and yep. um and, yep. and coming from um Brooklyn um where did you go to college at first where was your undergrad so undergrad a uh, school called Nyack College um, okay. actually uh, funny fact I went to Liberty University for my first year so I was a freshman 17 years old in Lynchburg Virginia Ooh. at a D1 school um <laughs> it was a very interesting experience to say my the least from there. but anyway go ahead I'm oh listening I'm listening I'm listening Lynchburg Lynch. 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 yes Lynchburg yeah, yeah. yeah. Know what was from so I was yeah. that was an eye-opening experience mm. um left there mm. and then went to Nyack College I played basketball D2 basketball up okay. there for the uh for the remainder of my school years up there but upstate New York and that was pretty okay. good good experience so that's mm. why I went and I, I majored in uh business Okay. And it was a minor in Christian ministries, honestly. So, 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 majoring in business, yep. I, I want, I want to ask. I think, with me, and, and, and I've talked about it with Aunt a lot. Um, 
I think everybody should take business. Mm. Um, yeah. I feel as if um, whatever you like to do in life, whatever, whatever your passion is, mm -hmm. uh, you should always take a business course. I feel business should be taught in high school and in mm -hmm. middle school because if say if you want to say if you want to be an interior decorator. Say if you even if you want to play in the NBA. Say if you want to sit here and run properties, you should always have a business sense. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I think that's the number one course that should be learned. Um, one on one, if you ask me, how do you feel about that? No, no, I agree. I think business is something that should be core or baseline. I think that you could build on your business, even mm -hmm. if you are in uh, media or if you are in art. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You have to learn how to make money, how to expenses, to run your P&L, mm -hmm. taxes, mm -hmm. crazy, yeah. right? Ta yeah. um, and you, <laughs> if you have somebody else do it for you, you could be taken advantage of. And that's the sad part about it, um, no matter what kind of skill set you have. So I do agree. Business is, should be a little bit more ingrained younger, mm -hmm. um, but shouldn't be forced, but give them an opportunity to do it. Like, there is a good option for you to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It should be ingrained. It should be ingratiated into that curriculum. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. they put so much other stuff in there mm -hmm. that those kids can't use necessarily. History, sometimes. And that's just CMS. <laughs> yeah. Like, no disrespect. Yeah. I'm just yeah. saying, like, yeah. they, it's always been that. Yeah. Like, we haven't learned. If I'd have known how to run a business when I was 12, mm -hmm. I would have been a millionaire already. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't yeah. teach you that. Yeah. Like, them econom ec economics classes, I'm like, this has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. We are in the projects. I don't have no access to nothing y'all teaching me. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if we got people like you, yeah, and you, yeah, your mama love, your yeah. mama always mama. Then we will understand. <laughs> you know, we would, and a lot of other like leaders that's doing stuff yeah. like what you're doing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. A lot of guys I follow, I've been following you, watching yeah. you, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then like I had to learn outside of that. Mm -hmm. I ain't learned it till I, you know. Got in the lead. Yeah. You didn't even learn that in college. Yeah. So it's like yeah. the economics of everything is based. It was. So I don't know about now as much, but it may be worse, maybe better. I don't know. But <laughs> it's based off what you know and what you come from. Mm -hmm. So now we got guys like you that's like, oh, I can read skyscrapers, shot of skyscraper. Mm -hmm. We'll get into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um and learn something at the age of 13. Yeah. And get yeah. an idea. Yeah. And mm -hmm. know what I want to do, yeah. mm -hmm. just in case I don't make the NBA, mm -hmm. or just in case I'm not a rapper, yeah. just in case I'm not yeah. Yeah. a yeah. movie actor yeah. or actress yeah. or something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. This is the importance of that's that, good. and that's why we need more. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. why we're so glad to have you on here too. Appreciate bro. it, bro. appreciate you know it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Well, uh, Tim, so 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 you know, before we get in the skyscraper, uh, this this book that I that I you know looks like it's going to be an excellent read I haven't read it yet and I, I want to get into it yeah, I can't wait I'm feeling I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I, got you I, I can't wait copies are for y'all um you got you got a Howard Bison shirt on now you. You, 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 <laughs> you we, we got to talk we got to talk about that cuz you know we in me act so um, yeah yeah where'd you so how was Howard coming man so mm. um while I was working at S&P, so mm -hmm. I interned at S&P, I ended up working there. So I interned every year between school, so mm -hmm. sophomore to junior, um, um, junior, senior. Mm -hmm. Worked there after I graduated, um, and I got really ingrained in the S&P culture, mm -hmm. enjoyed it. But I do, I noticed there was a ceiling. There's a lot mm -hmm. of people that were sitting in the same seat, doing the same job for like 35 years. Like something ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Like It was a lot of those, right? I was yeah. like, nah, I want to do something a little different. Mm -hmm. So I started looking at like what's the next step for me, and mm -hmm. uh, my sister said, get your MBA. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. Okay, I'll, I'll look into that. And I took a, a test called a GMAT, which is equivalent to SAT. Of course, yeah. yeah. And um, got a decent score. And I started looking at schools, started looking at schools across the country. Um, I got accepted to Michigan State, Purdue, Rice University, Syracuse University, and uh, Howard. So I had to make a decision which school I wanted to go to. Mm -hmm. Um, some reasons I got accepted was not because of my GMAT score, because they need diversity. Some schools just said, hey, we need some more diversity. Come over to our school. Mm -hmm. right. um, but Howard was uh, not only accepting, but they gave me a scholarship mm -hmm. as well. Um, went and visited the school. And uh, yeah, I thought it was a great opportunity. Four hours from home, mm -hmm. could drive back and forth yeah. to DC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was the best decision I ever made. Mm -hmm. I got to go to China on, on Howard's Nam. I got to go to Dubai on Howard's Nam, oh, wow. India. Yeah. It was a great experience. Please, great please experience. explain. I want, I want to ask you a question after that, but please expound yeah. on how did you get to go to different, these different countries? Yeah, so they had an international business class, mm -hmm. and uh, part of the class was there's a company on the other side of the world that wants to learn how to can you get ingrained to American culture. Mm -hmm. right. And how one was called Hangsoft, it was in China, it was in Beijing, and they had a, a, a piece for 
um, electric vehicles are trying to bring into the States. So mm -hmm. what we did was just a business case. This is how you do it. This is who you should contact. Right. And they flew us there to present to the CEOs of that company in mm -hmm. Beijing. And we're out there for about two and a half weeks. And it was just a, a mind blowing experience. Awesome. So the Great Wall of China, so like the crazy, like all the things you think about that you want to see in China, yeah. we saw that in Beijing and Shanghai, which was just, and I, I've never been back since, but it was just unforgettable, unforgettable. See, see that's awesome because I, we were talking about in the last segment about uh, our kids traveling and seeing yeah. different yeah. things yeah. and being from the inner city and, and yeah. not having those experiences yeah. and giving yeah. those experiences. Going to a, uh, an aunt, I want you to uh, have your question after this. Okay. I'm going to let you, let, let you eat. <laughs> you know, I always do, uh, <laughs> I, but I want to touch on this real quick because I, I just I love I, I'm I, I'm so humble to have you here and I, I appreciate oh, sure. you. Being, hey. Um, um, so going from Nyack being at a a, a, reg, a traditional institution and yep. going to HBCU, yep. can you explain the difference and in, in, in how it shaped you? <laughs> yeah. Um. Wow. So uh, Nyack's experience, it was a Christian college. Mm -hmm. So they had, uh, you had to go to convocation three times a week. They mm -hmm. had you know, male dorms and female dorms. And I was young at the time too. Mm -hmm. um, playing basketball, you know, you have some benefits with that. But um, you just see how other people operate. Um, I didn't know how people that didn't look like me act and react to certain things. Mm -hmm. right. And I learned that mm -hmm. in that environment. And uh, it was a little bit of a sticker shock. So, my high school that I went to in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. the four years I went to high school, there was one person that wasn't black. The whole four years. So why, person, why, school, why did you go to in Brooklyn? It's called uh, uh, Nazareth. 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 Okay. Nazareth. okay. Catholic, yeah, we know. Catholic, yeah, I know some school. guys played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about Nazareth. Yeah. So basically, I was there. And so me going to school where I'm now the small percentage mm -hmm. of the majority uh, was uh, very... Uh, very eye opening. Mm -hmm. um, again, stick a shock and kind of see how people operate in different scenarios. So that was that experience. Mm -hmm. How it was just, it was just amazing. I mean, yeah. I, I I think the two years in DC, um, got out, had fun, but mm -hmm. worked hard, mm -hmm. had fun, worked hard, mm -hmm. had fun, worked mm -hmm. hard, and um and it made school kind of fun. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and even years later, graduated, you know, 13 years ago now, um, I had people I still could. I still talk to now, like just mm -hmm. a lot of people I still talk to now that I went to school with back then. Mm -hmm. So it made some really good connections. Mm -hmm. so. You know mm -hmm. what's cool about yeah. that, bro? Cause I've, I've, my school in the pamphlet, Charlotte Latin said 97% mm -hmm. white, 3% other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I knew the other kids that was other wasn't like me. <laughs> was so like, I'm the only one like me here. Right, wow. right. right. And wow. it was cool, but. Wow. Can you talk to? Because I got a lot of kids that go to private schools, mm -hmm. and well, we we both we went talked to about this. schools, yeah, yeah, so we both went to we all went, there, yeah. yeah, so like we're all private school people, yeah, yeah, so like the kids like we have to and mother uh, love and mama love, mama love, mama love, mama love. <laughs> you know what time is? I love you, man. You know, I always do. <laughs> Some goonies, but yeah, goonies, <laughs> but um, yeah, man, like a lot of a few of them is just that one percent or that two percent that I had to be. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you, like, you from Brownsville, bro. Yeah, mm. yeah. Or you from East New York, I'm sorry. No, it's, it's, it's no, right. Uncle Murder. Shout out to Uncle Murder. Ain't never, never Uncle Murder. Shout out to Uncle Murder. Never ran, never will. East New York. Yeah. Not, East New York. <laughs> not, not East New York. East New York. Yeah. Shout out to Uncle Murder. We're going to get him on the show, too. <laughs> Can't wait to get him. But uh, so, like, yeah, man, just tell him about that transit. Because I struggled with that yeah. for a while. Yeah. That's great. Guy. Like, maybe like great the question. first three, four, five months of the school season. Mm -hmm. And when I read what I'm seeing was like your mindset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Skyscraper method. Yeah. Like a lot of kids, I didn't see no vision of anything I was thinking about doing later. Mm -hmm. So just like just the high school experience. We'll get into the book. I mean, I know we're gonna yeah. talk about yeah. but like just the mentality with that, because it is like a culture shop. Mm -hmm. That's huge. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Mm -hmm. So you like, you just can't prepare for it. You can't prepare for it. You, you have you to experience prepare. yourself. You just gotta. And and that that the word minority really means something at that point, right? Because mm -hmm. in your yeah. neighborhood, you're not the minority. You mm -hmm. you're one of many. You mm -hmm. went to school with one of many. You have mm -hmm. same mentalities. Y'all kind of play space together. Y'all have barbecues and we all together. Yeah. All together. And the, the word minority doesn't hit until you in a situation where you are literally the, the only, the only one, one in the room <laughs> that looks like you, that thinks like you. Mm -hmm. um, and it took while a while to be honest, to to think that I am equivalent. Like I know as much as you know, I can learn the same much as you know. Cause at first you come like, man, it looks like they know more than I know. They mm. they have a, a edge, right? but in reality they don't. And mm -hmm. it, took me, it, took, it took 
time to figure that out. But once I figured that out, that was like the lock and key method. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that to all the kids that's out there. You know exactly as much as somebody else knows that doesn't have your background. There's no right. different from your, your your background, your upbringing, your housing. This You could do exactly what they do and more no matter where you come from. That's a fact. We got to yeah. take a different path sometimes. Yeah. Yep. Because if you come from, yep. you from Browns, you from yep. East New York, yep. bro from from Queens, I'm mm -hmm. from West Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, a di Mama love from Jersey. Mm -hmm. You gotta go <laughs> from a different. You gotta have a different mentality because you're not gonna have a two million dollar trust fund. Mm. That's mm. true. Out the womb. That's true. It's like a womb and, is what and, I'm saying. And that, that's, that's a whole other conversation. So, you, so that's, no, no, that's, that's a whole different thing. Yeah, that's real. That's just that's saying. That's because what I'm reading. That's good. That's good. No, it is good. what it is. Nah, so you gotta, you gotta, I had to build that for my children. I didn't know what I was doing, yeah, but so, you gotta learn it. Yeah, no, that's good. That's you good. You don't just, mm -hmm. but so, that's, that's why I respect that. Nah, with that being said, I, I call it a safety net, right? It's a safety net that the others have that, you know, some people don't. I didn't have a safety net. Right. But the benefit kind of tying into the book, honestly, is you got to build that safety net. You have to figure out how do you can make connections, strong mm -hmm. network, strong connections. So mm -hmm. um, I talk about how to make weak ties, strong ties. So weak ties mm -hmm. is like you see somebody at work, they give you a head nod, mm -hmm. they walk past you. Mm -hmm. A strong tie, they see you to say, hey, how was your weekend? How's your kids doing? How was yep. your trip you just took? Because mm -hmm. they know a little bit more about you. And these are executives I'm talking about. So these people at mm -hmm. the top of the house. Yeah. How do you get them to get stronger ties? And that's mm -hmm. how you build your own safety net. So yeah. something happens to you, You'll be secure in that move, or you'll be secure in taking a chance and taking a risk. When you have a safety net, you can take a risk. Yeah. And people who have like trust funds and mm -hmm. you know, m mom and dad got different businesses in islands and two or three houses. Yeah. You could take a risk. I go, I could take a risk. I could start my own business. I could you know build a school. Mm -hmm. I could because I because I have just in case it don't work out, mm -hmm. my mom and daddy got my back. Mm -hmm. right. I didn't have that. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So that that definitely uh is something I do talk about. It's kind of how, how do you build your own kind of safety net. I like that, man. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah, it's real. So, so skyscraper. Yeah, proven method to build your career, build a dream career. Yep. Um, let's get into that. Um, what's your what's your what's your best chapter in the book? Best chapter. Um, I'll say the last one. I tie it in. So basically, the book has eight phases. And think about someone who's frustrated in a job in corporate America. I hate what I do. I don't like what I do right now. Mm -hmm. I go through step by step how to go from that. To I love what I do. And mm -hmm. I enjoy what I do in corporate America. Mm -hmm. right. It's eight steps. So each chapter, each step has each chapter has different steps, and you go through each one in each chapter. The last chapter ties everything together. So I talk about how to uh, find your passion and professional and passion and profession in corporate America, mm -hmm. and uh, and then building a network. But how do you tie both of them together? So how do you have your safety net networking executives, right. and how do you love what you do? Because it takes time to go from what you don't like to what you do love. You have to figure out what you love. You got to figure out what you're good at and mm -hmm. where those two things meet. That's a fact. And and you have to work. Hey, say that again it. for the people. That's real. <laughs> yeah. You got to find out what you love and what you're good at doing and where those two things meet. Right. So your passion and your natural skill sets. Your passions are, we have multiple passions. We don't, mm -hmm. we don't have one passion. We, right. have, we have multiple things that we love to do. Mm -hmm. How do you get fulfilled on the weekend? What are the things you do for fun? Mm -hmm. Those are your passions. Your natural skill sets, it's like science, math, numbers, mm -hmm. reading, mm -hmm. being detail oriented. Mm -hmm. Those are natural skill sets. Mm -hmm. Where those two things intersect in corporate America, that's where you should focus your time and energy and focus in your networking. Hmm. And that's what you're that's what they got. Everybody has to figure that out. Yep. Yep. That's the hard path to follow. Yep. And I would say that as a former basketball player because yep. I've been doing this my whole life. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I had to find that, bro. It took mm -hmm. some time to really see what I, what are you going to be passionate about like you was passionate about basketball? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And I had things, and I, I have things now. Yep. Real estate. Yep. You know yep. what I mean? Yep. Podcasting. That's obviously. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Speaking and, you know, found uh, philanthropy and stuff like that. So, but you don't know. Mm -hmm. You got to find so, it. So, and so I go through a questionnaire. So I have a, a couple of different questions that's in the book to ask you those questions. And you have to kind of right. dive deeper into yourself. So right. one of the phases, each phase is built on how you build an actual skyscraper. So the phase is called digging, right? And you dig deep into yourself. Mm -hmm. right. So it goes through a bunch of questions on um, passions and figuring out your, your personal mission statement. Um, and, and we all have different passions. Mm -hmm. And that's it's, it's really the work you got to put in. Because if you don't put that work in, honestly, you end up working in jobs that you kind of keep your head down. You're getting paid pretty well, but you, deep down you don't like it. You kind of just tolerate it. Right. Kind of flying under the radar, doing what your boss tells you what to do, taking the paychecks, and then you just get older. 
and you just yeah. don't enjoy life as much as you would if you well, well, actually. Well, 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 it's too much game. You're good. You're good. No, you're it's good. in the book. You're good. Uh, you're good. Uh, everybody laid book. off right now. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad. My bad. Okay, I'm joking, I'm joking. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Nah, but but that's what that's what ends up happening. People end up just um keeping their head down, doing the work, doing what somebody asks them to do just because they're getting a paycheck mm -hmm. and don't think that there's so much more opportunity out there. Mm -hmm. People are doing some great things out there. Pe mm -hmm. There's so many jobs out there in corporate America mm -hmm. that people don't even think about doing it. Like even um the work that Mother Love is doing. Mm -hmm. They have people that you can pay very well in corporate at, mm -hmm. at, diff at the biggest bank in America mm -hmm. or other banks, uh, right, to do exactly what she just did today. The mm -hmm. same thing, set up, making the light was right, make sure the, the, the sounds right, and they get paid well. Mm -hmm. And that's in that's inside the same walls. I wanted yep. to ask you a question because yep. I'm, I, you know, we, we actually are uh, in corporate America as well. Um, when when do you feel it's time, like, to, like, I guess, like, you learn, you've done a job for, you done you worked in car record for a long time whatever yep. but then you want to open your own business yep um when do you i can't i don't know if i can ask you that but like yeah, when you do could. you feel is the right time to 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 say okay fine i'm going to jump off the porch or or jump off the stoop you know from, from the, the city yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna jump so the stoop. I, i'm i'm <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna go with the financial lens you know mm -hmm. your you know your expenses you know how mm -hmm. much you pay for to eat during the month you know how much your, so, your cell phone bill costs yeah. you have a pretty much good idea of expenses mm -hmm. You should have savings, enough savings to cover at least three months of your expenses. Mm -hmm. And right. whatever business you have should be able to cover one month of expenses. Mm -hmm. If you have those two things together, mm -hmm. then jump ship. Jump. Okay. Yeah. I, I always think that if you don't if you don't have kids on a mortgage, it's a lot easier, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have kids on it's a lot easier to kind of jump ship. Mm -hmm. But if you have kids on a mortgage, you have to make sure those expenses are, are covered. Are covered over. And mm -hmm. you can take the risk. Now how about how about uh leaving leaving a corporate job and feeling about you don't want to burn bridges? What's the best way to do that? Oh, that's that's pretty easy. I think that goes with how strong you're networking. People know your worth. Mm -hmm. They know you're good at doing things. And as you're leaving, you want to have conversations as if you're going to give them a two weeks notice. Mm -hmm. um, I know for a fact a lot of companies don't give two weeks notice. They just say that. So, okay, mm -hmm. uh, you want to leave? We'll just pay you for the two weeks. Mm -hmm. And today's your last day. Mm -hmm. Right, I've seen that yeah. happen plenty of times. Yeah, that's you know, where usually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 so well, yeah, because because of you, the information they have, yeah, a lot, yes. especially the private, ones. private, yeah, information private information and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, so, which makes definitely. sense. But I think the best way to do is have an honest conversation as you're thinking about going, taking a step with your manager, direct mm -hmm. manager, and then when it's, when the time comes, when your day comes, you got to remember that that day might be your last day. So, okay, today's day, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell, put my two weeks in. Mm -hmm. Right, that day might be your last day, and you got to be prepared for that. How do you mm -hmm. feel like? I guess like. How do, how would you how would you feel or how would you interpret if somebody was in corporate and they had a they had a job and they're there and they want to go further faster like how would they step up like what's what's a good way to step up and and, and, and you know and go higher in the corporate ladder I think that um when you work in an organization it's like a big triage you have the big guy up top two people under them two people under them it's like a big triage right top mm -hmm. to bottom when you look at structures like that they have things that they call big rocks and little rocks mm -hmm. right i have mm -hmm. You know, ten things that I, that my company wants to do in twenty. Have Fraggle Rock. And, and, nah. I'm joking. Right. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, you good? It's the gummy. It's the gummy. It's the gummy bears. <laughs> um, no, go so so yeah. So no. So the big rock items. Mm. So when you know that the person that's like to say three levels above you mm. have top to bottom items, if mm. you're more aligned to the big rock items, you could. Go farther faster. How mm. can I help solve whatever that issue is? Mm. So people say, I don't know what the issues are. I don't know what the big rock items are. Mm. Every team has an all hands call. Every team. Every team has an all hands call at least four times a year, mm. usually once a quarter. Mm -hmm. And um, on that call, the whoever the head big, you know, whoever the bosses of this huge team organization says, we have these things we want to do in 2025. Mm -hmm. Thing one, thing two, thing three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever that thing one is, you got to be on that. You yeah. got to be part of that team. You got to be helping that, whatever that right. thing one is. Because that, that is the big, that's what they're being measured against. And that's a way to kind of jump farther faster within the organization you're in. Tim, I'm sorry, can you say that again one more time? Yeah, that's, that's okay. real. That, that, thing, that thing one. So whatever they out. say first, so when you're on an all-hands call, whoever the big bosses of the team, a thousand people on the phone call, and he says, okay, for 2025, we want to get A done, B done, C done in 2025, whatever the A is, whatever that thing he says first, is the most highest priority thing they have on their list. Mm -hmm. They're getting measured against whatever that thing is. And you go attack that. You have to attack that. You have to. If you're not on that Facts team, go. if you're not working on that, if you're not working within that, you're, you're not- important. You're important. You, you're a vital person on that team. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. And that's where the money flows. So <laughs> when they do bonuses and uh, calibration sessions, they say, okay, um, we have these you know, 500 people we gotta pay X amount of money to. Mm -hmm. Who gets the, the biggest 
hot. But it's part of A. That's who gets the money first. People don't realize that because they go on a whole hands call. They kind of listen but don't pay attention. They don't. Um, but they don't realize that you got to figure out where the money's going, the funnel of money's going towards. And, and they want the salary. Yes. You know what that sound like, man? Shout mm. out to my show. I love it. Suits. Mm. Mike. Oh, on Suits. He would go straight to whatever Harvey Suits needed. Suits is a great show. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love that show, yeah. man. Yeah. And I, I got on it late, like yeah. eight years later or something yeah. like that. But he went straight to the problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why he was so successful, even though, mm-hmm. you know, what you watch the show, y'all see it. Mm-hmm. But he went straight to the, yep. the issue. Yep. Went to A, yep. what you were saying. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's what people. I, that's real, bro. Yeah, yeah. it's it's right. a short it's a shortcut play. You know what I'm saying for those yeah. who want to get farther faster. Because um, that's a great, that's yeah. a great. Yeah. You just gave a, a real big jewel. Yeah, nah, people nah, know that. Yeah, that's nah. dope. I was in when I first got to Charlotte. I worked in the Hearst Tower. It was now Truist Tower. I worked for a company. I don't want to put it out there. And um, but like so, I was the only person. I worked in IT in Annapolis for the company. But then I moved out here, and I was. I was working in Charlotte, but I was around the the, the, the bankers and the real estate people in on the floor for the company. And I was privy to a call that I wasn't that I wasn't supposed to be privy to. And it was the all hands call. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I remember my stepfather Abdul told me, You need to listen to that call because mm-hmm. that's that's where the stocks is going. Mm-hmm. That's that mm-hmm. that's their that's what's driving them. Mm-hmm. That's their first quarter pronunciation. That's what they're gonna do. Mm-hmm. So what you just gave is is <laughs> Yeah. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. But you have access to that if you're in the if you're in certain companies that do that. So yes. like the most most corporate companies have all hands call. Most yes. teams have like okay, our mm-hmm. man just having a call to bring everybody in, and he talks about whatever his top priority is. You got to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? And um, I always say go a couple of levels above your manager. So don't just think what your manager's top priority is because he might be the lowest priority of all his managers. Of right. All, yeah. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go higher up the chain. Right. So. Tim, you give, you give it, yo, hold, hold on, I'm scared right now. He's giving a lot of jewels right now. <laughs> <laughs> Too late to book out. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and, you know, and, you know, and actually, you know, Charlotte and Racine, actually, you know, I'm I'm actually learning a lot. Um, I've known Tim through, you know, doing events and stuff, but like, I'm actually learning a lot right now. So this, this interview is like really giving me a lot of tidbits and, mm-hmm. and jewels. Yeah. You know, so I appreciate I it. I got you. Thank Good. you. Thank you so much. Definitely. Um, and. What's that? I don't know about you, but the skyscraper. Title, I love it. What is it? What is it? When you look at the book, and what does the skyscraper title mean to you? I think it's like this is what I was thinking about while I was because we got a. Yep. I'm thinking like first pass the gummy bear juice. <laughs> oh, you got the gummy bear juice. Pass, pass, pass it. Pass, yeah, yeah, pass yeah, it. I got you. I got you. Yep. The, the chalice. Yeah. Yeah. Tim sure. ain't drinking no wine tonight. That's all right. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's like the mindset. Of going all the way to the top mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from what from corporate America. If you're mm-hmm. working like you just explained it, mm-hmm. T- T just, he, Tim, you just explained it. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. coming out of that corporate America mindset and really taking a chance on yourself. Mm-hmm. But the Jews you just dropped yeah. is like I don't had to work in NBA corporate America, yeah, yeah, and yeah, I understand yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, you know. But I understand what that is because even playing the league is like corporate America. Uh-huh. You're just hooping. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You pay you well, but at the same time, yeah. you still got to be, yeah. you know, you got to play the game, yeah. you know? Yeah. So when you get to the point where you don't have to play the game, mm-hmm. that's a whole different path. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I'm going to read this book. All right. You know right. what I'm saying? I, got you. I, 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 I retain I got knowledge you. every day, bro. I but I think that's that's, that's my mentality on the skyscraper. That's a mentality. And I and I actually talk about um, retaining information and being able to like like listen to books or read books and the benefits of reading books. So I didn't read books till later in life, mm. but now I, I listen to like let's say uh, audio books. F- yeah, I listen about 50, 50 a year. I'm yeah. audible. I'm, I'm, I'm audible. I'm, cra- I'm cranking out. So I'm actually doing an audible for this. Okay. As we speak. That's what I want to talk I to you about. Yeah, the platforms. I love that. Because yeah. audio, yeah. I, I, when they started the audio book thing, like I would read a book on a plane and just yeah. be chilling. Yep. But like when they started audio books, I could like really take notes yep. as I'm listening. Mm-hmm. Pause it. Yep. Take the note. Yep. Play it. Yep. You know what I mean? No, that's good. It's going to be dope, bro. That's good. No, no I appreciate that. So, so with, with this book, I want to ask you a question too. Yep. Um, is it, I think this is, a, this is an important question. Um. But where does where does passion meet your profession? 
Oh, that so I've uh I've created something called a passion skills matrix. Think about like an old school multiplication table, right? Oh yeah. So I have all the passions on the side, all the skills across the top, and I ask a bunch of questions. And when I ask the questions, kind of make you think a little bit more about what you're really good at doing, what you're passionate about. Are you passionate about learning new things? Are you passionate about traveling? Mm-hmm. Um, do you love attention to detail? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, do you like to communicate? Or are you a talker, right? Yeah. Um, do you like coaching others? Yeah. Do you like giving back? Yeah. So once you go through the questionnaire, it's, 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 it's work focused, mm-hmm. you'll figure out a couple of things are going to stand out. Those three things are going to be yeah. your top three things for that one item. Then you That's look at dope, bro. natural skill sets. You know, then yeah. you go through that. And then when, you do, when you do both of those, where those two things meet, there's a jobs. There's literally physically jobs in that box that lets you know, okay, well, because you're good at speaking and coaching others, maybe you might be a career coach mm-hmm. or you might be good in HR, mm-hmm. doing diversity and inclusion. Right. Um, if you like design, you might be good in media, mm-hmm. right? Um, a lot of people don't think about what they're really good at and how I could be successful in corporate America. So mm-hmm. it's an activity, it's a whole chapter on it and um, and it helps you kind of just get clarity on what will be your best next step. Can you, can you, can you define, I wanted to give you a term and I want you to, um, if you can, I mean, I'm pretty sure you can define it. So was, no, I don't mean to, not trying to, you know. Um, digital dirt. <laughs> oh, oh, digital dirt. So mm. um, I have a chapter talking about social media yeah. and the power of having a strong social media presence, not just Instagram, Facebook, but also LinkedIn. Mm. Um, a lot of people don't take advantage of LinkedIn. LinkedIn's free and it has a huge variety of executive leaders. You get jobs, you get job <laughs> offers over LinkedIn. Yeah. And mm. people don't realize that when people look you up, they, they're going to look you up on both Facebook and Instagram mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they'll find some stuff out about you. Mm-hmm. So the term digital dirt is a term that basically means, like let's say you had a wild weekend in Vegas 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and, you done, and you done forgot about it. <laughs> right? Yes. And, 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 <laughs> so and, you, and you might be tagged, you might be tagged, you might be tagged in a picture, <laughs> mm-hmm. you might be tagged in a picture that you're not, that's not favorable for you. Mm-hmm. You, don't, you don't even think about it. Mm-hmm. But I, I advise people to kind of go back, look at what you're tagged on, mm-hmm. untag it so it's not favorable for you in your mm-hmm. career you're trying to go to and get rid of your digital dirt yeah. because it will somebody will find that picture mm-hmm. and it could come back to kind of bite you yeah um and and, and as you're looking to kind of excel in corporate america and go farther in corporate america this is like a basic thing you could do that's easy it's free and you don't really think about it but it could hurt you if you don't do it yeah that's true so you gotta clean up your digital dirt how would you clean up digital dirt uh there's a few ways to do it one obviously you untag yourself mm-hmm. Um, you could close your account if mm-hmm. your account's if it's on Facebook or whatever, mm-hmm. um, or or you could put more positive information about yourself out there. So mm-hmm. LinkedIn is a great way to kind of put things like podcasts, mm-hmm. images, any type of uh, functions, philanthropy work that you do, mm-hmm. um, put that out there, and people say, "Oh man, Anthony's into." Yeah, it's better. It's better. It's better. It's easy. Like so fifteen you, years ago. <laughs> so, you, but you flood you mm-hmm. flood the positive over the negative. Yeah. Some people don't touch their LinkedIn account. Right? They don't yeah. touch it. And you look on the page, you don't see a headshot, you don't yeah. see a background. These are things that you could put out there mm-hmm. for free and then put yourself out, put yourself out there to get a better job opportunity mm-hmm. to get to the money. I think I think I would tell you all day, I think um, LinkedIn is a um a very slept on social yeah. platform. Um, yeah. I've gotten jobs off LinkedIn, I've done, yeah. you know, it's, it's it's helped me out. Um, but also like I I, I actually had a I have a close friend that you know, we were in, we were at, we were out one time in Arizona mm-hmm. and we weren't doing that in a while, but like, you know, he was like, you know, mm-hmm. we were taking pictures. He's like, he was like, mm-hmm. don't, don't take, don't, don't do it. You mm-hmm. know, you know and he's like, mm-hmm. I'm at a level where I can't, you know what I mean? And um, I would also say, just be aware of your surroundings. Like 100%. you're going to, you're going to have friends that, you know, want to, 100%. you know, hang out. It's natural for everybody to have a good time. Yep. Right. Um, But like, you're still under the microscope. Yep. 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 I think that, um, Ant knows yeah. that. Ant knows that because Ant, Ant being the league, right? Yeah. Ant, you know. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No. no. They, they, they're smart uh, tactics, kind of. No. 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 I mean, like, no. But like, no, but, like, no because like, you know, like, like, listen. I'm gonna say something, and I'm, I'm gonna cut you off. No, but like, you're good, you're good. but like, with us in corporate, we're not far from like NBA players or, or professional players. Mm-hmm. Um, our background and 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 what we do and, and how we move, it it it, it traces us. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and my thing is, is that you know, at the end of the day. You know, we are all from we 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 grew up not knowing about none of this yes, stuff. Yep, yep, yep. We never we never had yep. a clue that we would be at certain situations. <laughs> I never knew I would have a podcast with Aunt Morgan. Yeah. I never knew I'd be sitting here with the a young vibrant ten ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so at the end of the day, you know, uh, 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 we we have these platforms, but we also 
make sure that we protect each other and we don't, you know, we we have we we have a, a trace that we that we leave and a legacy. I think yeah. legacy is important too. Yeah. And, legacy and, is number one. Yeah, I'm. I'm Good, I, I start thinking about the the younger kids when you when you start talking about the the digital dirt stuff because mm-hmm. of TikTok and Instagram and other things mm-hmm. out there now. Um, there are a lot of like Instagram models, male and female. Mm-hmm. A lot of f- so supposed fitness people, mm-hmm. male and female, <laughs> and they put themselves. Yeah, it's crazy, <laughs> and they put themselves out there, and it's it's fun to watch. Not mm-hmm. gonna lie, some of it's fun to watch. It mm-hmm. does catch your eyes. It does, it does what it's supposed to do, mm-hmm. yeah. but eventually they're gonna change. Their body's mm-hmm. gonna change. Their their, their family dynamics is gonna change. They're gonna get married and have kids, and they then they're gonna want to get a job or do something other than mm-hmm. Instagram yeah. or social media or TikTok. And that's where they're gonna hit a wall and a realization that, oh man. I shouldn't have been doing that. I shouldn't have been doing that. <laughs> and you know what's crazy, bro, with that is the importance of what you saying, yeah. what's in your book and what you speaking yep. on, what we speaking on and everything. Yep. Is trying to find something that's recession proof is the real key. Mm-hmm. 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 People gonna wanna read, people yep. gonna wanna hear digital books, yep. people gonna yep. wanna do certain things that a recession is not going to take you out of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people went through it. I remember I was in 08, my rookie year in the league, mm-hmm. Golden State. Yep. And we're kind of going through it now, yep. but I'm retired. So it's like my old plan different. <laughs> yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like straight, but it's like your yeah. old plan has to change from mm-hmm. then to yep. 16 years later, yep. like yep. that. So like, that's the whole thing, bro. That's why mm-hmm. I want to, I'm going to definitely read, mm-hmm. read it, but read your book. Mm-hmm. But um, that's the most important piece in what you what, what we talking about. You yep. know what I mean? What you're talking about, what you're speaking on. Um, it's imperative for people right now, especially young people, mm-hmm. because it's not easy to just go in there. People was going get you know, out of college, ninety thousand, mm-hmm. hundred thousand. Yeah. Now it's like we don't even want to pay you nothing. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm talking yeah. about, bro? Yeah. So like now it's like having those conversations. It's tough now because we got social media now. It wasn't like that in 2008. No. no. So like now it's like, you don't want to look like you, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, oh, I can't say nothing. And then it's like pulling these people into these different emotions mm-hmm. about themselves, about their families, they got kids. Yep. And it's like, you don't want to be patient enough. That's mm-hmm. why this book is so important because they don't want to be patient enough mm-hmm. to take a chance on themselves. Mm-hmm. Patience you know, is just genius. Take whatever you give. Me. Patience is genius. Yeah. Patience you know what, is genius. Yeah. What you yeah. said, my brother. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. you know what's so crazy is like I look at I look at America now. Like when I'm in board meetings now, or or meetings or whatever, I will sit here and I remember when our the culture the culture is the culture that we have mm-hmm. is where we come from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now you have like you know like, and I'm you, and you probably know too like. No, you definitely know. <laughs> you probably know a lot. You well, do know a lot, but like, you will have people in meetings saying, "My bad." Now mm-hmm. you go to the corporate office. You got people wearing 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 Jordans, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Dunks, and and, mm-hmm. and and Jordan ones. And this this was a something to where it was frowned upon when you when you first when I was well, the way I was raised when I first got out of college, I had to wear a black suit. And I had to wear shoes and I had to come into a corporate office, be of course, be it half an hour mm. or an hour ahead on time or whatever, and be able to 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 give a, a good account of myself. But you know, now I go into I go into corporate offices, you know, I, I see uh managers, senior managers, directors wearing Jordans. Mm-hmm. Uh I see I see uh I see people in meetings saying, Oh, my bad. Mm. And you couldn't say that. You couldn't say that mm. back. Yeah, you couldn't even you say couldn't, that. You couldn't even say that back. In. Mm. Uh, and, and I, Especially and I, and I, good like us. Yeah, yeah. Of, <laughs> yeah because yeah. It, you know, and, 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 and you know, you know, like, but like you know, but that's how the culture evolves. Like, mm. there's nothing wrong with that because the culture is evolving, and people are getting more comfortable with everybody. And mm. I, I actually like that because it's mm. more comfortable. But like, I just remember a time, and we're around the same age where yeah, yeah. we it was it was different. Yeah. It was just totally different. It was yeah. totally different. I think a lot of kids take that for granted. Um, I, I look at my I look at my children. You know, I and we talked about and I wanted to touch on this because you have you you have children just like me. Yep. Aunt has children. Yep. Um, and with them, we were raised differently. We were raised from the inner city. We were raised in a different time. And 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 we worked hard to get our children out of 
yep. situation that we yep. came from. Yep. How do you navigate today raising your children in that environment, but coming from coming from the environment that we came from? Yeah. Because we were raised different. Yeah. Totally different. All yep. three of us. Yep. You know, it was more, it was a little bit, I think I, I can honestly say it was more aggressive. Yep. It was more, uh, you had less room for error. Yep. Um, less, less, it was less talk back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, we had to, we, we, we were the ones to push our family forward, you know? So, yeah. Uh, I saw, I look at it like this different. It's not, it's not better. Right. So me getting my butt whipped by my mom at young age didn't, is not better than me whipping my daughter now mm -hmm. in 2024 <laughs> is yeah. a whole, whole different situation. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, I think that I learned through the hard, like my mom was just a Jamaican woman, just tough, right? She smacked me upside the head and for anything, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, fast shout, forward. Shout out to mama nurse. We got yeah. to mama nurse. Shout out to mama nurse. Mama nurse. Mama nurse. Yeah. <laughs> she don't play no games. <laughs> so, we love you. Shout yeah. out to mama nurse. You don't want to get smacked. <laughs> <laughs> get worse than that. No but, headshots. Well, still <laughs> yeah, yeah, I still, I still, I still, 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 still. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Uh, I think that, you know, you have to figure out how to feed the fire of your children as young as they are. So my daughter right now, she's six years old. She's swimming mm -hmm. and she wants to swim competitively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So at six, we got to talk about it. We have conversations. I have mm -hmm. like, I'm just open with her. I try to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's power and vulnerability. And, um, and I think that's, that's, that's my parenting style and it mm -hmm. works for the current situation now. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work me beating my daughter at all today. Mm -hmm. It's not that that won't work. Mm, She'll talk yes. she's my daughter's too smart and slick for that anyway. But <laughs> um that's not gonna happen. So I think that it's different. And also, um, I think that now making money and doing well financially, um, my three year old will never know life without a cleaner or without having a chef. And I'm yeah. I'm blessed because of that. Yeah, um man. but I don't want her to be um get hurt when she gets out there in the real world. And um, so I try to be real about what I went through mm -hmm. and be honest about it mm -hmm. and say, you know, and when she asks questions, just be honest about it. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing about it, like being honest, being vulnerable, and then take an opportunity to kind of be, to, to remind them kind of where you came from and just, just tell them, you know what I'm saying? And if you don't, then they will never know. So a word I want to give both of you guys, failure. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you? Wait, let me... I'm, 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 I'm no, cooking I'm right now. You, so you, know, you know where no, I'm going. Because <laughs> my daughter's 15 uh, mm -hmm. and she plays volleyball. She in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and I felt the same way. Like mm -hmm. I've never had to feel like I had to physically discipline my daughter. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I came up <clears throat> ass with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We still all corporate. of us did. All yeah, of us you did. know we're still corporate, bro. Mama, you good, bro? You good? You good? You good? Mama Angie. Oh, and, man, and Mama man. Lynn and, and, and Mama man, Nurse. Y'all yeah, put hands, it's the hands and feet session. We call, we <laughs> call it the hands and feet session. It worked out. They, it worked it out. out for it us. Out. But they, they, they put hands and feet. But it's all good. good. It's yeah. all good. Yeah. Statue of limitations is up. Yeah. Statue of limitations is up. Hands and feet. Hands and feet. Go ahead. Talk. No, but just like with that concept, bro, because I talk about, because I got three boys. And um, my boys with me, of course. And um, just having them, raising them differently than I raised my daughter. But I don't have to put my hands on them like that. Mm -hmm. That's good. I'm going to have to jack them up here now. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, chill yeah. out. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's boys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but with my daughter, I never, like, she's 15 now. Like, I mm -hmm. never, ever had to do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's good. But I never wanted to feel like. <laughs> Tips, that's good. Let's <laughs> 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 but I never had to do that. Nah, I mean, it's just, no, it's just because I, I like you know, boys different than girls. Yeah. Right, right, I would never. Yeah, I don't look at my daughter like that. Yeah. Like she, she's older and she's mature for her age. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. my boys are still young, but um, kind of young. They like eight and twelve and shit like that. <laughs> but you know, I um, you know, I that's a big point you made though, mm -hmm. bro. You know, because I always make this point that I can't raise. If I raise my children like I was raised, I'm doing them a disservice yes. mm. for society. Mm. You know what I'm saying? In yeah. this generation. That's good. Mm. That's good. Mm. So, like, coaching, training, mm. AUT, mm. all these younger, like, adolescents that mm. I'm around that mm. I have to mm. do stuff, I have to be able to understand. I'll be like, I'll take some kids home from mm. school. After practice, 
What you listening to? Who you listening to? Who y'all be listening to? What's going on music wise? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What y'all watch on TV? What shows y'all watch? Mm-hmm. What y'all watching on Netflix? I want to see it because mm-hmm. the only thing gonna keep me connected. Mm-hmm. I'm 39. I need yeah. to be connected yeah. if I'm gonna be in that element. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to be disconnected because I don't like to hear 65 year olds talk shit about a 17 year old. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're not trying to be around a 17 year old, you're just dismissing them. Mm-hmm. I'm never gonna be that person. Yeah. yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Not even with my own children. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anybody in my community, the schools, or yeah. anything I'm around, yeah. I have to stay connected with you. You know what I mean? That's and that's what most of these guys need to understand that in this generation because you don't want to start this disconnection. Like these kids are so disconnected from the older generation yeah. and they're not that much older than us. Mm-hmm. It's just that the parents getting younger. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So they're like, that's my friend. No, that's your son. Yeah. That's your daughter. Yeah. Grandma, that's your grandson. Yeah. Well, we, that's we, not your homie. Well, Ed, we grew up in an era where, That's why we got to keep the integrity of that, like though. Grandmothers, though. Yeah, like you know what I mean. Like you know, like it's just it's just different now. Um, uh, we were we were, we were we were we were from a, we were yeah. from a different era. We were from a di- we were from a different era. Like, and I, that's why, like you know, like with this, like I'm gonna tell you something. Honestly, it's like with with this book skyscraper. Besides the book, I'm I gotta salute you because I know I know I know your pedigree. I know what you come from. You know what I'm saying? One of our friends went to college together. Shout to Marcy, Derek yeah, Novell. Yeah, yeah. I, I know, I know, where, I know where you come from, and um, to get out of that situation, just like Aunt from from West Charlotte, me from Queens, South Side, whatever, doesn't matter. We don't own these streets. We don't own these areas. We don't own these blocks. All we're trying to do is survive and build our legacy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And when you when you have a brother like you that that sits here and, and, and is able to reach where you reach, but and still be able to give the knowledge back. A lot of us don't want to give the knowledge back. We want to hoard it to ourselves mm-hmm. and, and and keep it to ourselves. And I think that's a, a big problem within the community. Um, and these platforms where we can be open to sit here and have these conversations about where we're we from, how we navigated through life, um, um, what pit... Because... And the reason that's why I asked about failure, because failure is important because we've all yeah. failed in life. Yeah. We've all failed in life. Yeah. And, and failure is different. Failure could be failure can be a, a situation to where your failure might not be somebody else's failure. And I had to realize that. My cousin, Mama Love's brother, um, was was was, you know, came over one time and he was like, <laughs> you know, where I, where I'm staying now, he was like, if this is your failure, I don't. This is your downtime. I don't. You're doing bad now. I don't. I, I want to see when you like. You know, I want to see when you're when you you know when you're doing better because like at the end of the day, it's like my my low point is could be somebody else's high point, and we don't take that into consideration. That's hey, say that again, bro. My low my low point in life could be somebody's best high point and opportunity, and you're looking at it boy. where to. For us, I'm looking at it like. Oh, oh, oh. And then somebody else would be like, this is beautiful. Yeah. What is this, velvet? Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? And, <laughs> and, so, and so at the end of the day, you know, um, I always go back to where I come from, uh, where I'm from. And I had a single mother just like you, yep. just like us. And that's what I think is what drew us together yeah. today. Single mother, worked in corporate, yep. got her degree at a young age with the Pace University, yep. Yep. Um, huh. excelled, uh, put moved me out of Queens, Took me to Heistown, New Jersey, Prince, New Jersey, bought a house, mm-hmm. or second house out there, mm-hmm. and got me there. And we're all a product of strong black women. It's we are fact. all a product right here of strong black women. My mom went to Pace as well. She graduated from Pace. Your mom well. went to Pace. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. It's funny. Pace in um, New York, downtown Manhattan. Do they have that? In, they got a Pace in Atlanta. I don't know if they like. <laughs> Incorporated with each other. This is Pace downtown in downtown Manhattan. Never mind. <laughs> Look at Pace Academy. That's what's up. No, no, Pace, Pace University. Oh, no, my, my it's one bad. Of best universities. Yeah, yeah. This is one of the best benefits. This is why he <laughs> high he is. <laughs> <laughs> that was love. But like, I feel, I, I just feel like the energy of like us just being here today together and God is boys together. Yeah. You know, I'm a yep. Christian. Yep. Um, Absolutely. Um, yeah. Because of uh, you know what we have, we have a lot in common. We're we're, we're all three of us. Think about this now. All three of us are private school. Yep. From the inner city. Yep. 
single mothers. Yep. That's powerful. Yeah. That's very powerful. I want you guys to understand that and take that in right now. You know what I'm saying? That's why. That's why. That's why the Lord has brought us here. To, I don't want to get saved. I've been going to church. You know. Yeah. But I, I want to get so a quest for fulfilling career that aligns with your passions. That's what I'm reading yeah. from the back of your book. Yep. Yeah. I want to ask you, um, what actually made you want to to have a book? Um, okay. yeah. um, I want. I want to. And it, it could be a journey in life. Yeah. But what made you have? Because a lot of people will never ever take the. A lot of people will never even want to write a book about their situation or even have the. Yeah. You know the goal to do that. What you know, or to even have a conference. Mm -hmm. yeah. What made you want to do that? So it started with uh, being requested to speak on networking. So I have a lot of mentors that I have now in corporate America that I didn't have when I first started. Mm -hmm. And um, just think about just like say executive leaders that know who I am. Know I'm a Jets fan. Know that I'm from oh, Brooklyn. Uh, you know <clears throat> that we have good. We have good. Have good conversations. Wait, wait, <laughs> and I'm saying I'm listening. No, let's yeah. talk. Let's talk. Yeah. I gotta get back yeah. to that. Like, yeah. back to that. <laughs> it's crazy. Nah. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Um, and um, <clears throat> so what ended up happening was uh, because I had these conversations around networking. Mm. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all a story. I'm, I got a pretty good story about this. So yeah. basically, um, I had one one of my managers mm. had a conversation, and usually I tell like things I'm doing good, things I'm doing bad, mm. how to improve. He said, "Timothy, I need to stop you here. I got something to tell you." Mm. I said, "What's going on?" He gives me a white envelope. Mm. I open a white envelope, and it was it says, "Timothy, thank you for your time here working at this company." Getting paid for two weeks for every year. I was being fired. You know, time stopped. I just moved to Charlotte. Just got married, and I didn't know how to react. I'm a space player, so I kind of kept my space face, smiled, shook his hand, said thank you for your time, walked out, called my just then. We just got married. Just called her, said hey babe, you don't realize, realize what just happened. She said what? I said I got let go. She reacted by laughing. She's like no, we just got let go. that. Just happened. I just moved from Chicago to Charlotte. And you got fired. I said, nah, baby, I just got fired. So, so what you going to do? I said, you know what? I'm going to reach out to my network, the people I've been meeting with, these executive leaders that I've been talking to. And within five days, I had five offers. That's real. So within five days, I had five verbal offers from these different leaders. So light bulb, bing, networking works. Like, right. this, there's something to this actual networking thing. Mm -hmm. And I fine-tuned it over the years. But after that event happened to me and I told that story, people asked me to speak about networking. What did you do to get these executives to trust you with that information? How did you do it? And then that turned into me becoming, hey, I know more about networking than the next person. And I said, you know what? I might need to write a book about this one day. So one of my classmates uh, from Howard actually mm -hmm. had a kind of shout out to Z. And uh, talking to Z on the phone and she was like, you know what? You, sh you should go ahead and start writing a book on this. I was like, nah, I'm not an expert. I'm not a, I don't know everything about networking. Like, no, you know more than the next person. You need to start this process. Mm -hmm. And that was the seed that got planted in my brain. And three years later, I came out with the book. So the book is not only about networking and having executive leaders to get you job opportunities, but how do you find something you love first? How do you and plan then, to get to the thing? Exactly. And then get to the spot that you want to get to through the networking, right? So it's a combination of both together. Um, but that's how I got to where I'm at today with this book. And I feel like it's a really good story. I talk about that story in detail, mm -hmm. how I got the five. What chapter is that? That's towards the end of the book. That okay. Was, yeah, yeah, the book. So it, it kind of ties everything together. What's, what's something in the, in the meat of the book? Pause. Uh, <laughs> you can't uh, stop, bro. Hey, what was that, bro? Get the juice. Can I get the juice? Can I get the juice? The third, the third, the third. What is going on? The third, the third, the third, the third or fourth chapter, or like in the middle, that, that 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 you like as well. All on the scene. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's going to be such a nah, game against. I, um, I talk about this different types of people that work in corporate America. You have people that don't network. They just mm. kind of keep their head down and do work. Mm. But they are not susceptible to what I call career storms. What is a career storm? What's a career storm? A Definitely. career storm is like being fired mm. or having a really bad manager, mm. being part of a reorg. Because mm. a lot of times in corporate America, a reorg will happen mm. and you, you just don't accept it. You, like It just happens. You cannot do anything about it. It's like a hurricane. It's outside yep. of your control. It type. It's, it's, it's literally like a hurricane, almost the equivalent yeah. of having a hurricane. Right. So you think about a structure like a tent, right? Having a tent in a hurricane is a bad situation. Right. In my mind, somebody who doesn't ha doesn't network and just do their job, they have a, created a tent. They're not prepared for a career storm. Mm -hmm. right. Then you have somebody who I call a bunker. A bunker is somebody who networks like crazy, 
but don't know what they want to do in work. They don't. They don't. They know a lot of people. They have executives that they know, so they yeah. have depth, right? But no growth, no height, like a yeah. bunker. So a career storm happens. They can go to another job. They can get another opportunity, but they don't like what they do. Right. Their work still sucks. Third mm -hmm. one, I call a glass tower. A glass tower is somebody who goes up in the company. They're doing what they do, but they don't network. They don't go out there. They don't meet people. They don't. They don't connect with leaders. And a glass tower, if a rock hits it, it crashes. So right, but it's very high. It goes. It goes go ten stories high, yeah. but it's all glass. And what happens when that hurricane hits? It crashes. So how do you have depth and height? How do you build what I call skyscraper? Right. So how do you have the depth of a bunker and the height of a glass tower? And like that's kind that. of the combination of the book. I like that, bro. You know what I'm saying. You know, hey, bro. I want to say, hey, bro, because you you talked about networking. Yep. And you know what's crazy? And I can't wait. Like I said, I can't wait to read your book. Yeah. But I was the, at first, I was the glass tower, mm. Mm. I feel like, mm -hmm. because I knew all these people from playing yep. 10 years in yep. the league, yep. but I didn't know how to use them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until I got older, mm -hmm. like in, in like long, long tooth in the league, yep. like my seventh, eighth year, you know what I'm saying? Wow. And once I learned it, I was like, damn, I wish I knew this my second year in the league access, or something. Right? You had access, access to all, all this yeah, I was access, but like at the beginning, it's like, I don't even want to talk to you. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I, I don't even want to be at this event. Yes. Mm -hmm. But my eighth year, I'm like, I'm staying here all day. Because mm -hmm. yes. you're around the owners, mm -hmm. executives. Yes. You're yes. around the exactly. uh, GM. Yep. Man, man, tell them how and you got sister. that one job through Oklahoma when you was. That's Sam Presti. Shout yeah. out to Sam. That's yeah. my man. Yeah. That's how, what got me into, like, when I retired, like, mm -hmm. into the, like, executive side. That's you good. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it, it took me, you know time. what I mean? Yes. It took me time. But at the time, I, by the time I got to OKC, I understood it. That's why this is important. Just one thing, bro. This is my last. Are you good? I'm, can you explain to them the importance of what you said? Because I heard a, there's a, it was an analogy mm -hmm. that I just heard, like listened to, which mm -hmm. made so much sense. My man said, a tree grows under and it grows up at the yes. same time. Because mm -hmm. it has to to live. Yep. And you got to be like that when it comes to networking. Exactly. You got it. You got it. Because you plant the seed. You got it. It starts growing down first. Yep. That's To the start the root. That's the thing. And then it yep. grows up. You got it. That's how networking is. You, 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 got, the, you got the whole thing. You probably ain't got to read the book. You got it. 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 You don't do me like that. I'm reading the book. Your analogy made me think. I read a lot of shit. I read a lot. Yeah, you on Cliff Notes right now. You know you got it. I don't even know where to find Cliff Notes. That's how I know you old. What Cliff Notes say? You have seen Cliff Notes in 12 years. One thing I do want to say about the glass tower, though, I always, I use a reference to, uh, the famous movie Training Day. So mm. Denzel yeah, Washington, yeah. Training Day. Yeah. Huge scene, the biggest scene in the movie. Of course. King Kong ain't got, got ish on shit me. On me. In, mm -hmm. that, in that scene, if you remember, he's in his own neighborhood. Mm. Yep. He needs help. Mm. Yeah. He's looking at all the people around him and mm. they look at him like, we nah. don't know you. We, had, mm -hmm. we, haven't, we haven't connected with you. We don't have strong ties with you. Mm -hmm. Right? So in that moment, in that scene, he was a glass tower because he had built this, you know, business and, you know, what he was doing, you know, side, doing whatever, all, that, all that stuff he was doing, making yeah. good money, whatever. But he didn't build connection with the people that really mattered. It was people in the neighborhood. Yeah. So in that moment, he was a glass tower. Everybody he was around in that movie was pretty much outside of that. Yep. Yeah, he yep. was in the jungles, too. Yep. Shout yep. out to my homies. In LA, <laughs> in the jungle. You know, you know, you know no, what? I, 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 I want to I wanna piggyback off you said before I, before we, before we uh, start winding down. I want to tell you something. Um, you're absolutely right. I, you know, like um, I feel like um, there's a, a a segment in Charlotte that has, you know, professionals, blue collar. Yep. And then you know, yep. You know, and and we're, we're all a part. We do events. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? And, you know, and um, my goal. And I think our goal too, because you know, my guy, is always to be, bring people together. Um, and I think that's important um, because we are all one. And it's not about just us; it's about everybody. Yep. Bringing everybody together yep. in a melting pot to 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 work together and be at a higher level. Um, you know, like I always show reference to. Uh, 
I watched the Isaiah Thomas story where his mom show, was showing all his, his siblings, you know, they had she had one toothpick and she broke a toothpick and said, it's easy to break, right? But then she got a group of toothpicks and she couldn't break it. She said, it's harder to break it. You know, and I will always say it's, cool. it's, it's easier to break one. But if we always get together and work together, mm -hmm. you know, that's it's good. harder to break us. That's good. You know, that's good. Um, I want to I want to highlight skyscraper, a proven method to build your dream career yeah. by Timothy S. Nurse. Um, it's is a, a, a we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna definitely plug this book um, going forward. Appreciate that. And I and I and I'm I'm so happy to have you here. Um, I need my autograph copy. I got you. I'm gonna do it. I got you. I need a calligraphy on it. Um, but before 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 we before we wrap this up, we're gonna play a little. Uh, a little uh, fill in the blanks. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get it. BK all day. All day. And, and, is he ready? Is you ready? Is you, is you ready? <laughs> ready? Lord of looks. Is you ready? <laughs> Tim is for my hooligans in Brooklyn. Okay. He got the first one. That was easy, though. Yeah. Uh, the apple don't fall no too far from the tree. Uh, you got that. Yeah. This is my grandfather said pear tree. Pear tree. He's smoking you right now, bro. I mean, he's I'm going to give him a country one. <laughs> How about this one? If your friend jumps off the Empire State Building, <laughs> don't jump. So that, that's generation. That's generation. <laughs> thing. Oh, my Bob used to always tell me, don't follow, don't be a follower. <laughs> if you're going to be a follower, if you're going to be a follower, if your fr fr friend jumps off the Empire State Building, are you going to uh, join? Mm -hmm. nah. Oh, that's not right. <laughs> I thought it was so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's nah, not, nah. So, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> let's, let's go. Let's, let's go. go. Give me your safe. Give me your safe. <laughs> so, the last one is, uh, is, is the pot, is, is that the pot calling the kettle? Oh, okay, black. Okay. Right? Right. Yeah, hold, yeah. There you go. Oh, the pot called the kettle, like Martin said on the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, can, can you, uh, in closing, can you give us, and, and also, if you have anything to say about your book or anything about, you yeah. know, your, your yeah, no, no. tell everybody where you at. Yeah, no, so, so um, I obviously, IG, uh, TS, TSN304 is my IG. Um, I, if you need help with your career path, learning how to go farther in your career, uh, want to think more about uh, making more money in corporate America, uh, those are my sweet spots. You know, helping with interview prep, resume prep, uh, mock interviews. Um, um, I do a lot of speaking engagements as well. So I do workshops on the topics around career advancement, uh, networking, how to go farther faster. And they, and they, get, they, get, they get in contact you on the workshops? Through yeah, their... uh, it's through my, it's through my IG mm -hmm. or my LinkedIn. Um, my LinkedIn is definitely the best place. You know, Timothy S. Nurse, MBA, you find me quickly on um, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And I have a website called careersinaction.com. Mm -hmm. Again, careersinaction.com. Look me up and um, definitely want to reach out and help, help people out. So awesome. Enjoy. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Yeah, so I want. I want. I want to tell you, brother Timothy. I've. I've been a. Um, and I, I'm not saying it's because you're on here. Um, I reached out to Timothy. Uh, I want to say a couple of weeks ago we were hanging out or whatever, and I saw him. No, I was actually in front of my uh, building, and um, I, I reached out to him before we were at a birthday party yep. to be on a podcast. I want to tell you, I. I'm very humble. I thank you for being here today, Definitely. taking time out of your busy schedule yeah. to educate and uh and 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 to and to help assist my platform yeah. i'm very humble i appreciate yeah. you i've always been a fan of you um from your events um to your background to where you come from and i i thank you so much appreciate for being it. here thanks for having me appreciate it thank no you so problem. much definitely brother my brother you definitely. already know definitely. we love having you on thank here you. man thank you for real you know i follow your shit, man. yeah yeah but yeah. this has been very informal um, you know i'm gonna read the book man yeah. and um any questions let me know i got you i got you, I got you. I got you. I got you bro.